Alright guys, today we're going to take a look at the last lock that NP x-rayed for us, and I, I call this a mystery lock. I've been struggling along with you guys for, I guess, about a year. About, that's about how long these guys have been out. So let's take a closer look at him and do a little bit of analysis. Pretty cool lock. Um, I mean, you could probably take a hammer to it, but uh, in terms of picking or pick resistance, well, the way this works, you can take a look at the key and you can see it's got sliders. They're, they're, it's not symmetrical on both sides, so that tells you that the sliders on the left are independent from the sliders on the right. We slide that dude in, rotate it, what, 90 degrees, and we get an open. You can see his ball bearings, and we'll confirm that when we look at the x-rays. Let's lock it back up, and this is where my frustration begins. Normally, these locks, you can tension them, and as soon as you tension it, one or more of the sliders will bind up and you can pick it like any other pin tumbler lock. This one doesn't work like that. When we take this guy, we can take our tensioner, we can slide him in there and he just rotates freely, no binding at all. And here's something else weird. No matter which way you rotate it, that key will still slide in there. And you can rotate that key and you can pull him out at any position. Doesn't matter, still locked, still locked. And also when we slide that key in say, part way, it'll still rotate freely. Again, it doesn't open unless it's inser inserted fully. So almost all the way, all, there's all the way, back it out one, still rotates, doesn't open, and we can pull it out at any angle. It doesn't really care. That tells me that nothing inside of here is binding up to cause that key to seize until it's rotated. So my thought was, well, it's not top of the keyway, uh, it's not top tensioning, must be bottom tensioning. So. I took one of these little things. These are from injection molders. This is what kicks the mold out. Uh, I won't pretend to understand how that works, but they make nice uh, tools sometimes. You can take them and file them. So I filed that about the same dimensions as the key. It does slide all the way in there and it's perfect. And my thought was I want the wire to be thin enough so that when I tension it, I can pick the sliders on both sides. And it's a great plan, but yeah, it doesn't work. There's no tensioning at all on this guy. So I wanted to figure it out, and I couldn't until NP created these x-rays. So let's take a look at this guy. All right, I'm gonna overlay this so you guys can see probably more detail than you see here. Right away, it's in the closed position. You can see the Bible's on the left. Um, you can also see two ball bearings up there at the very top, and both ball bearings are sitting into the cutouts on the shackle to keep it secured. Something a little bit unusual, there's a, a relief cut into the shackle on the right, so as you'll see in the next x-ray, the ball bearing on the right doesn't retract fully. It still sticks out into that channel so that when the shackle does open, the bottom of the shackle will get caught up on the protruding part of the ball bearing. So it will open the lock, but you can't pull the shackle out. No spring inside of the shackle, so very cool. On the core, um, when we look at the core, there's a lot of really small pieces, really hard to make out exactly what's going on, but I was curious about the voids in the, down the center of that core. Um, when we take a look at the lock, let me turn the key in the correct position. So we take a look at the lock, there's our, our um, Bible on the left, just as you see here, and you can see that the key is oriented like that, so there's a huge void in that direction, allowing the radiation to penetrate, and that would explain that void right down the center. The other thing it would explain is on the right, you see uh, six small light areas, like little disks, and that would be one side of the core showing the sliders, and you know that, notice that they're slightly out of line with the offset uh, washed out areas on the left, telling me that there's an identical set of sliders on the other side for a total of 12 sliders, so very cool. Uh, on the left, and this is where it starts getting really interesting, you can see um, two small washed out areas and what appear to be ball bearings sticking out. And those two ball bearings are resting or being pushed up against what I'm gonna call the sidebar in the lock. There's a cutout in the core, you can see it very clearly, and that sidebar is sticking out, pushing against those two ball bearings. So that explains why we are able to rotate this core. There's an air gap between the locking mechanism and the ball bearings and, and this core. This very, very cool design. Um, so when we rotate the core, those ball bearings just roll along the outside of the core. As long as that uh, sidebar is sticking out there, there's no way that they can push uh, uh, fall in, and there's no way we're going to get any kind of tension. We're not going to tension the lock. We're not going to tension those sliders. So what this tells me 
is that we actually have to insert the key. And the sliders, which we can't tension, have to be put in exactly the right position to allow those spring-loaded ball bearings to push against that sidebar, to push it or to depress it down inside of the core so that the core will then rotate. Very, very cool design. One last thing, let's take a look at in the bottom left of the picture, you see a little washed out area. And uh, in the center, it's a little bit darker. And that's how we're gonna take advantage of this lock. If we take a look at the lock, again, it's oriented with the, the Bible on the left, just as in the image. Um, there's a little brass pin right there that you can see they beat it in there with a hammer. I believe that's the only thing holding this core in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill that out and we're gonna remove this core and we're gonna take a look at it. What are we looking for? Well, let's take a look here at the next picture. This is the unlocked position. Now again, you can see the ball bearing on the top right is holding that shackle in. So you can see that the cutout on the uh, actuator is not quite as deep on the right. And you can see that the core has now rotated and those two ball bearings are rolling on the outside of that core. Apparently, because you can see that the key is inserted here, the, ball, the, the sidebar on the other side has been depressed into the housing of the core to allow it to rotate. So very cool. No resistance whatsoever. That's the amazing part of this. So here's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and cut this guy open. I'm going to drill out that pin. We're going to pull it out and we're going to see exactly how that sidebar works and why we're not able to pick this evil thing. All right, this is starting to get kind of interesting. There is a small circlip that fits in that groove there that holds the inner, well, actually there's more to this than what we thought. This actually has three sleeves. So it holds the outer sleeve to the middle sleeve. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So when we take that off, we can slide this dude off. You can see the two chambers here for the springs and the ball bearings. I've already slid this out once and they popped out, but they push directly down onto the sidebar that we saw very clearly on the x-ray. Now here is, is what's not so clear. When I take this sidebar off, I expected to see something quite different. When I take that sidebar off, I actually see, I rotate him just a little bit, a second sidebar right there. He rests on that. So how does it work? Well, slide him back in and let's take a closer look at this guy. This outer sleeve is one piece and it's the actuator. So this whole thing has to turn, not just the inner core, but the whole center sleeve the interior one, now here, here we go, let's take the key, we'll slide them in there, and you can see that the interior core rotates, and I'll push down on that with my thumb, just like those two little ball bearings and spring did, and you notice as I rotate them, nothing really happens. Doesn't go into the body. Now, if I slide the key all the way in, again, I'll try to hold this and slide them all the way in, you can see that he does go down inside of the body, and this is where it gets weird. Now what happens is, that slid in far enough to bind the inner core to the middle sleeve so that the entire thing is now held together by that locking bar and the whole thing turns. So very cool. So when it's lined up, what do we see underneath there? We line them up here and you can see there's the sidebar right there underneath. So I hesitate to pull this out. I really don't know what's going to happen here. <laughs> so I haven't done it yet. So let's Let's see if we can do it slowly without breaking anything. And miraculously, no gutting disaster just yet. Okay, so let's set him aside. And now we can start to see all of the wafers inside of there. We can see the other sidebar in the side of the lock. I was curious why the sidebar on the outside didn't appear to spread the entire length of all 12 of those sliders, and now we know why. That wasn't his job. We actually have two air gaps. We have an air, ga air gap between the, the ball bearings that are pushing onto this sidebar, and then we have an air gap between this sidebar and that sidebar. So very cool design. I'm really afraid to pull this key out of there, <laughs> but let's do it. <laughs> oh, man. No, I don't. Oh, yeah, he's going to fall out. So there we go. Oh, man. Okay, so I'm going to try to pull this out. Let's just, it's never going back together. But you can see how he's starting to come out. There is a spring tension on all those sliders. And it's consistent from one to the other. You're not going to get any binding. And you can see the gate right there that that sidebar would fit in. 
So very cool design, very secure, and I got to tell you, if this is the future of lock design and lock sport as we know it, has just changed dramatically and not in our favor. Anyway, guys, there you go, NP. I thank you again for the x-rays. It kind of helped me figure out the right way to go here. Kind of figure what was going on. I wish I could say it helped me learn how to pick it, but I just don't think that's the case. Appreciate you. All right, guys, one of the things I probably should have looked at before looked at before I started popping out all of those wafers is this additional sidebar. If he fits into the grooves, he has to be independent. And he is. We've got a little V-shape that fits into the grooves that I showed you on the side of each of these wafers. There don't appear, well, let's do it. There don't appear to be any false gates, but let's find out for sure. No, no, no. And I don't imagine that there needs to be false gates. If you're not getting any tension on this lock at all, then you're not gonna be able to find false gates or real gates. Yeah, not a single false gate anywhere inside of this lock. But quite intricate machining, I've got to say. That a lot of effort went into this to get this just perfect. No burrs or anything. I mean, there couldn't be as tight as the tolerances appear on this guy. Anyway, guys, there you go. The no-name Gang Sheng uh, wafer lock. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal.